Ms. Malau. So one of the questions that's come in online, how can I generate love towards Salat and Quran in my kids? I see other older kids who are regulars at the masjid now rarely coming to the mosque unless forced by their parents. So there's a young man I know who, mashallah, every time I see him, he sits in the front row um, at Jummah. And every Jamaat prayer that I've ever seen him in, he's right there in the front row. And I was asking him about that, like, how, where does that desire come from or that habit? And he told me that when he was little, he's older now, he's uh, 19. When he was little, he said his father would give him a dollar every time he would go and sit in the front row. And he said, so as a child, he loved collecting those dollars. Five dollars a day adds up. And he said, but now I just do it out of habit. It's, he knows he's not getting any dollars from anyone for sitting in the front row, but it's become his habit. And he, mashallah, broke it down really beautifully for me because we were talking about how is the best way to teach the religion and put a love for the religion and the practice of the faith in the next generation. And he told me that he thinks three things are very important. He said, one is that there needs to be motivation so he said when he was little, that dollar that he got for sitting in the front row was motivation. But now that he's older, the motivation is talking about akhirah, talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But to really make sure that there's some motivation when you're talking to your kids about their ibadah. The second thing he said was role models. He, said, he named specific shiuch who were there in his community who inspired him and who he enjoyed watching while they were praying. And that they were the ones who had a big influence on him on, on the way he prayed and his desire to pray. And the third thing he told me was, so he said, motivation, role models, and the third thing he said was understanding. He said, it's very important to understand why you're praying and what you're saying and what the point is behind prayer. He said, for many kids, he's seen that parents say, oh, Allah expects you to pray, so you have to pray. It's haram not to pray. But they don't actually understand why and what's the purpose behind it and as far as the question which says that they saw that kids who used to come regularly and you know maybe were into the quran or into praying but now they see that they don't come unless their parents are quote unquote forcing them to what i've seen is that in life it's we're not just on the steady course there's ups and downs that come, even in our own lives. And if we look at ourselves and think that right now, if I had somebody who was forcing me or telling me that I have to read this much Quran every day or I have to sit for this long in my prayer afterwards and do dua, would we rebel against that? Or would that be something that would make us go, yeah, that's something I want to take on? And it's important that when kids, after the age of 14, what I've seen is that we need to kind of give them their space once you've established routines for them th throughout the early years, what I've noticed is after 14, you're really just maintaining whatever you've taught them up to the age of 14. With all three of my kids, I've seen that, that after 14, it's really hard to start implementing anything new. And whatever we've been teaching them up until that point is now what we're going to be maintaining. And I hope we can build on that. But if we are going to build on it, it's going to come from them. It's not going to come from us. It, it's going to be completely self-directed and self-motivated. And, you know, this, I learned it the hard way. One of my sons, um, when we gave him a car for his personal use, I told him that you can have the car, we're gonna give you the car, but only on the condition that you go to the masjid for Fajr and Isha. So if you go to the masjid for Fajr and Isha, then, then you can have the car. And he had been going, but it had been hit or miss. It wasn't a regular thing. He'd been going on his own. But all of a sudden, I, I saw it take a dip. It wasn't, the, the effect was the opposite of what I had wanted and what I had hoped for. And he actually told me, he said, you know, Mama, up until now, when I was doing it, it was doing, I was doing it because it was a goal I was trying to achieve for myself. But now that you told me that in order to have the car, I have to go for Fajr and Isha to the masjid, it feels like a chore. And all of a sudden, the desire isn't there the way it was before. And I took it back. I, I apologized, and I said he could have the car, and as long as he's not going anywhere haram in it or doing anything haram in it, God forbid, 
he's welcome to, to use the family car. But, um, but that was a big lesson for me, that you can't force kids to do, to do anything when they're older. And, and we're talking to parents of teens right now, so after the age of 14, you have to give them the space to figure it out. And hopefully, um, you've been setting routines and giving them role models throughout their life before.